Okay, uh, so let's find out if these changes are going to make any difference. With me, uh, two MLAs uh, who should know, including one who is now the new Lord Mayor of Belfast, Naomi Long, the Alliance Party. Thank you. And um, Alex Atwood of the STLP. Well, first of all, Alex Atwood, is it all going to get very exciting? I, I doubt it. I think Lord Morrow actually gave the game away by attacking STLP proposals to radically restructure accountability at question time, which is the public's access to politics on a weekly basis in Northern Ireland. What he actually demonstrated was that the DUP and Sinn Féin don't want more accountability around politics in the North. They don't want to have questions more and more asked about how they have failed the people of the North. And Sinn Féin in particular don't want to uh, have further evidence that they've let down nationalism over the last couple of years. So that's why Lord Morrow was so defensive about proposals, especially in the light of what's happened in Westminster, that the SDLP are saying let's have higher and deeper accountability. Let's really test the mettle of uh, members to ask questions and minister to answer the questions. Let's have really rigorous accountability. And we'll bring those proposals forward in the near future. But I think in the short term, you can see how the DUP and Sinn Féin don't really like it because hard questions mean certain outcomes that are not in their advantage. But your party in the Ulster Union has designed the system in the first place, so obviously you didn't want the spontaneity either when you had the but top jobs. I think it's very different to compare what we have now compared with 10 years ago. Uh, 10 years ago we were in the early days of devolution and we were borrowing models from other jurisdictions. We're now in a settled period. Um, a question time, unlike in Westminster and the Scottish Parliament in Northern Ireland, is dying on its feet. The public are voting with their feet or with their buttons by turning off the TV. Well, we do our best, yeah, obviously. You, 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 you actually do better than a lot of the MLAs do, and you should be congratulated for oh, well, that. Thanks very much. But we're, 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 not saying, flattery. we're saying, let's have more question time. Let's have ministers being asked supplementaries after supplementaries where they're given up the same war meaningless phrases as answers. Let's have a situation where, in particular, our speaker, who allows ministers talk endlessly, giving the same mm. answers repeatedly. Let's okay. have our speaker be more rigorous in the chair. OK. Uh, well, Naomi Long, uh, you obviously enjoy the cut and thrust uh, of the, the debating uh, chamber. Um, but do you wish there's a bit more too? Well, I think that there are a couple of things that are positive about the changes. I mean, I think the fact that, for example, you don't have to formulate your questions to submit them weeks in advance of them actually being asked will actually help with some of the relevance issues because there are occasions where members have to be extremely creative to get a question that is valid at that point in time onto the agenda for that day. So I think that that is an improvement. My difficulty though has never been with the questions. My difficulty is with the answers because what we tend to get are these kind of pat phrases from some ministers, I have to say not all, some ministers um, tend to just read out these long speeches in response. It's and a problem be, we sometimes have as interviewers yeah, as well. <laughs> well it's hugely difficult to actually try to get to the core of the issue and I, I mean I have to say I don't think it's only actually with the oral questions. I mean I think even with written questions there is a tendency for people to send stock answers rather Rather than respond to the actual question that's been asked. Now there's been a debate as to whether or not the speaker can compel a minister to ask because how does the speaker judge whether a member simply being critical or whether the minister really hasn't answered the question. But I think that there is a degree of frustration and I think what we need is perhaps the opportunity on occasions where the issue warrants it, for example, to allow further supplementaries from the same member where they are pursuing a line of questioning, where they are making some progress or are not, to actually be able to pursue that further. But if your uh, own party ends up uh, with the justice portfolio, do you think your own minister will fare a bit better in terms of answers? Well, there's a lot of ifs in that, but I have to say that I think if any of my colleagues were standing up there, they would want to answer the question and I would be quite happy to have them open to scrutiny and, and dealt with robustly because I actually think scrutiny is good for politics. I think it's good that people have a chance to be held to account in a public forum. It's part of the job. So we certainly wouldn't be shying away from those changes on the basis oh, that we may be a minister one um, day. 